Thank you for joining us for an exciting episode of World Stompers, South America, starring Brad Olson and Emily Infinity. I am your host, Suzanne Ross, and on this episode, Brad and Emily take us on a virtual adventure to Moray, Moras, and Chincheros in Peru. Enjoy. Moray is one of the most visually stunning Inca ruins with its large bowl-like depression consisting of a series of concentric terraces that look like an ancient Greek amphitheater. Moray has also been called an ancient engineering mystery. Some believe that Moray may have been used by the Incas as an agricultural research station. Let's join Brad and Emily as they tour Moray. Acoustic resonator is the new thinking of what Moray is, or is it what the tour guides tell you, an experimental station for growing seeds? But why can't you just use the hillside for that? And why is it that there is such incredible acoustics? You can see the uh, steps going down, so it would have been accessible to people. Maybe it had some kind of ceremonial space or a way for people to gather. Okay. Here the echo, there is some incredible acoustics here. Brian Forrester was saying he was here one time with 5,000 Peruvians that came dressed in their colorful Incan wear here for a ceremony. Emily's checking some uh, herbal remedies perhaps. Our little Inca trail path here as we circle around. Unfortunately, you cannot go in there, but you can see the steps to go in, so when they do have ceremony, people are allowed in and the highest families will be sitting in the center. Really in a truly remarkable location in a natural amphitheater, dome-like setting. What do you think, Emily? Next, Brad and Emily visit the salt pans of Maras. This Peruvian canyon is filled with geometric salt pools that have been being harvested since the Incan Empire. They cascade down a hillside and are called Salinas de Maras by the locals. They were first created sometime in the 1400s by the Incas. Salt is harvested from the patchwork of shallow pools via process of evaporation. A natural spring feeds a salt-rich stream that flows down into the pools, which are then opened and dammed individually as needed. Once one of the pools is filled, the water is allowed to evaporate, and then the salt crystals are scraped off the ground with simple instruments. Then the whole process begins again. Our next destination is Chincheros, seated on a high plain with sweeping views. Chincheros was known to the Incas as the birthplace of the rainbow. It's a traditional Andean village that combines Inca runes with a colonial church, wonderful views, and a colorful market. These are some hieroglyphs. Of a megalithic wall. This is Inca. It's still very good quality. Above it is Spanish. Not so good quality. <clears throat> like the walkway. Not so fitted precisely. This 
to be an Inca wall. But here, where they're just talking, this is pre Incan below with Inca work on top, pre fitted. <laughs> Because there were earthquakes, they would have fallen apart. But the older the stones, the better preserved they are. And once again, you have that puffy, marshmallowy build. Look at the shine. Very interesting. Those corners cut so finely, precisely. And there's an the assembly of things. This Inca Palace has now been observed as a church. It is now <coughs> used or as a place for sales or anything else. There's also some remains of the Inca Palace down here. We're going to gather out in this meadow here. Meditation. It looks like, oh, there's some big megaliths over there. Check that out. Megalithic ruins, and all these terraces just go on and on. It's quite an extensive site. Yeah. I remember that employee level, uh -huh. world thing. Hey, we got uh, built in uh, stadium balconies here. It is. These walls are just amazing. It was all four. It's cornerstones. Huge. Dozen levels, thousands of stones, so perfectly fitted, octagonal architecture to survive the eons of time, earthquakes, and so much more. Quite amazing. Yeah, this is not hundreds of years of wind and, and rain. This is thousands of years. I mean, when, when you look at this wall all together, you know, you can <laughs> see the piecing together of all the stones mm -hmm. and, like, the engineering it would take to cut all these stones knowing where they're going to all go. Oh, it's clearly not made that way. No, no. It's made as it went, yeah. and the stones are molded into place because they're in a different state. Then, right. right? And so, and, and so that might sound like really crazy, it does, but, 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 it, but, but there's not really 20 million alternatives, no, right? No. I mean, it's like, okay, it's not CNC's, it's not proper tools, definitely not, right? right. right. So it's something vastly different, especially if you're talking about a 120 ton boulder. Oh, yeah. right? So it's not like a bunch of guys like pulling it up, like cutting it a little bit, putting it back down, right? No. It's not happening that way. So we're talking gravity control, right? Capability of moving very large objects with these gravity control. And when we're talking gravity control, we're talking huge amount of energy. Oh, yeah. You know, to lift something that high. So if you energize a stone at those levels, Mm -hmm. Then it becomes plasma. Mm -hmm. right? It becomes like plasma fiber. The, the energy levels, uh, the ion energy levels in the stone, so it becomes soft. I, mean, I think this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you know, like we don't have the science to reproduce 
that experiment currently in a laboratory, mm -hmm. right? We don't have gravity control. So to us, it might sound completely extraordinary, but there is not 20 million explanations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's only a few possible things that has happened, and when you examine the rock, mm -hmm. and when you, when you, you know, Egypt, Baalbek, all these places all around the world, yeah. that would have huge rocks that were moved, you know, long distances. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this is way more advanced. Yeah. So now you have to be able to imagine past the tools we have today. Right. Right? And, and that's hard, because you are how can that be? Well, why do you think that we would be the first one to come up with advanced technology? Mm -hmm. Like the universe has been there for 13.7 <laughs> billion years at least, right? We know. So it's like, why would so and and so they could have been very advanced civilization on this planet. And there's evidence that they were. Yeah. That in not only in their in their structures, there's kind of thing, evidence mm -hmm. that there was and that you know and it's emerging finally it's emerging and more and more archaeologists are starting to to talk about a pre-cataclysmic society that was very advanced that was here long prior to these later civilization like the dynastic Egypt or the Mayans or the Incas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there is evidence of one piece of high technology in Mexico that I found too. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. The Olmec, the Maya, the Aztec, they found places and they went, oh my god, who built this? This is now a sacred site to us. Mm -hmm. Because okay. whoever this was, was way beyond what our capability. Right. Yeah. And none of these cultures ever claimed to have built them. That's true. That's true. They don't say we built the pyramid. Right. They say the sun gods built the pyramid. Right? Mm -hmm. So it really is like a different, you know, thing that like somehow, you know, the archaeology community has has like completely ignored the local knowledge that was that is present in all these cultures. There's not one of these cultures around the world that says, we built these things. Exactly. They all say, sun gods, the sons of God or sun gods came to the earth from the stars and built these things. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs>
Let's honor this sacred site here in Chincheros by joining the group as they form a sacred circle and create a spiritual flow of spiraling energy. episode of World Star.